Hi, I'm Stuart Agnew. I'm a recently elected MEP from the Eastern Region to Brussels. And as a farmer, I've almost automatically been put on the, the Agriculture Committee in Brussels. And uh, I find that a very uh, impractical committee. A lot of people are there for different reasons. We even have a human rights lawyer on that committee discussing farming issues, which I find very, very strange. I see my role in that committee to, to push as hard as I can for the British farmer's interest and not for the interest of anybody else. Because there's no doubt at all in the CAP, the big, big beneficiary is the French farmer. I mean, for example, when the WTO stopped us giving uh, headage payments to animals, we thought in Britain that was the same throughout the EU, but it wasn't actually. The WTO gave the EU a quota. They said, OK, you can still give headage payments to a very small degree. And interestingly enough, the French got the entire allocation to themselves, which means they're now getting 50% of the headage payments that they used to get, plus the full single farm payment. And it's that sort of thing we must highlight. Member States particularly. Well, in that agriculture committee, there are people representing Slovakia or Hungary who have ideas that, in my opinion, are a hundred years out of date. And then they want to try and preserve full-time livelihood for somebody with a handful of, of animals, and it can't be done. No, it's a real challenge. It can't for be them. done. They, they regard the whole as a social policy rather than a political policy. Well, it's, I mean, I mean, the Comrade Culture Policy also started for one of its core aims, wasn't it? it was to maximise food production, cheap food, and keep yeah. people on the land. Yeah. So that's what it was done for. Well, now, you know, especially with the review coming up, I think there's a, a everyone's got to have a debate on what is that for. What do people want? Do they want it for the environment? What do you do? Say it. Yeah. Don't hide behind saying other things. Well, they do they want it as a social engineering tool. Do you want it, do you want it social engineering? Mm. And are you saying that food prices don't matter and you don't, you're, not, you're not worried about food production? <laughs> to say what they want out of cap. Yes. And being yeah. upfront about it. Um, you know, we're, we're quite clear on what we think it is. And then you've got a, what does the WTO want from the well, CAP? You see, that's yeah. pushing that all the time. <laughs> Uh, the WTO that, affects everything. Uh, far more than <laughs> British farmers realise. Mm. It's, it's driven the agenda now for the last 20 years, mm. really, in, in getting the CAP to wind down its barriers and all that sort of thing. It's yeah. a slow process, but it's relentless. It never goes back. Mm. You keep going one way all the yeah. time. And this so called level playing field and everything is something that, you know, we've. British farmers have been for a long time and it's sort of one step forward, one step back into mm. Europe and then you've got you know, other countries, other states you know, yeah, at the same time to contend with. No, um, we, you, you may be if you're a livestock. No, you're not fully livestock, no, are you? No, I mean, we've got the problem now with, in, with protein, right? It's a crisis yeah, yeah. almost. Yeah. Uh, because they keep turning these boats around mm. with the imported yeah. protein in it because they find traces of, the, of GM. And, and uh, I'm worried I won't be able to get enough protein on my farm. Uh, somebody's written to me as a constituent saying he's been warned by his, his supplier. He's a chap with a couple of hundred acres, barley, and he has pigs. The barley is added to imported soya, and that's a ration for his pigs. Because he's a small chap, he's not a co-op, he's at the, right at the front end of this, yeah. and he's been told, we may not be able to get your soya. Really? It's a big problem. I mean, yeah. You know, and uh, it's, it's just amazing what people's, um, they're very short term policy making in yeah. ways. I mean, oh, well, it's, you know, it's not a problem. We are going to reach a real crunch point where you know, there's not going to be enough protein to feed, to reduce the you know, poultry and, and pig meat that people want. Well, in, in Brussels, I make it my business to try and point out some of the practical problems on the ground for farmers, which many of the committee members there are simply unaware of, because they're not really there to look at practical problems, they're there to push an agenda, be it climate change or be it social conditions on Eastern European farms, that, that sort of thing. And I like to bring a muddy boots approach to the, the whole thing, pointing out that in Britain, we, we would like things to be done this, that and the other way, and the things they're talking about in the committee really have no direct advantage to British farmers and so I'm there to represent the British farmer and common sense I hope.